Today I'm going to take a quick look at my leader LTC905 Curve Tracer. I got this used. I got a pretty good deal for it. Um, and of course the Curve Tracer is used to check out transistors, diodes, FETs, and so on. I'm mostly probably going to be using it to check out transistors and um, maybe diodes. I don't know. Um, Probably I always say I'm going to end up using test equipment. I really don't. I just basically always use a oscilloscope and a multimeter. Anyway, since I sold some test equipment, um, of course, then I can get more test equipment to make up for that. So, what have we got here? Um, I got everything. I got was able to get the user's manual. And I am missing the cables that are supposed to run to the oscilloscope but I got um, something like this which is a in-circuit probe tester and I've got two two of these so you can hook up transistor to one side for example and transistor to the other side and then you compare the um, characteristic uh, curves um, of course this thing runs off of uh, AC power it'll run off of 110 and 220 and again as I mentioned I think I got a little instruction booklet that actually came with that or no excuse me no I didn't I think I had to download one that's more like the truth um, if we look at the unit of course here's a power on power off switch and it's made by leader which is one of my favorite test equipment manufacturers their stuff works good and it's not too expensive and we take a quick look at the layout here over here it says vertical on the left here or and here where my fingers at on the right this is horizontal so this is hooked up to the vertical input of the scope and this to the horizontal input and of course you have to put the scope in XY mode or um, external. Now this has to be hooked up. If not, we're going to get we're not going to get any kind of display. And here you can switch to polarity. Say if it's an NPN transistor or a PNP transistor, and this is external bias. So if we want to do some tests and use an external DC voltage. Mm, which would mean of course we have it in this position see this thing normally what this does here is supplies a, like a staircase waveform um, to the to the base of the transistor and in this case if we use the external BIOS we wouldn't have that we would just be applying a DC um, voltage and here the base current can be adjusted I think there's like about four five maybe one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten at least ten steps and looks like on the other side here we've got um one let's see one two three four five six seven eight this is the voltage um basically there's you're also going to pl be applying a like a a rectified or rather a DC um, basically what it is it's like a DC uh, rectified um, sign sine wave to between the emitter and the collector um, and that these two when these two um, waveforms when they apply to their transistor for example that'll give you the um, basically curve family that you going to see on your oscilloscope um, see here we have you can switch there's a, I guess there's a current limiting resistor down here you can switch between signal or signal is low power and power transistors and horizontal length here I'm gonna to have to check the book for that so I think it's probably for um, accurate accurate readings you can adjust the um, the trace width 
and the sweep voltage here it goes all the way up to 100 volts and I think the what have we got here um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay, excuse me. I think here we have the, we can here, we can apply up to two milliamperes of this uh, staircase uh, waveform. Of course, you get your power on switch, LED. Um, you can switch between transistor and FET. And here you can select between A and B. And of course, here's the, um, jacks for the test cables and of course you got little um, here's little sockets for um, transistors and that's basically all there is um, to it so let me go ahead and hook up a scope and see what is actually um, coming out Now I just said a minute ago that the curve tracer, um, it basically a, applies a staircase waveform to the transistor. And now what I've did, I just want to see if this is actually the case. Um, if we look here, underneath here, it actually says base. So what I did is I hooked up the other end of that cable, this green cable, to my scope and um, also I didn't get these test cables so I just used these little plugs with uh, banana jacks with here alligator clip at the end and I got the other end of the scope hooked up to that and so I just want to show how that um, staircase pattern actually looks like um, in case you're interested what kind of probes I'm using I'm just using a normal direct probe there's nothing at all um, special about this and this is what I meant by staircase uh, basically staircase pattern now when you see the uh, family of curves produced when you're using the actual curve tracer, each of course each uh, step is going to be a little bit more, basically a little bit more current applied to the uh, applied to the base. Now I might add that it looks like it's all happening at the same time, but it's actually not. One's happening after another, except that your eye really can't follow that. So now I got the scope hooked up to the. Uh, basically to the collector um, the scope probe is hooked up to the collector test lead and here you can see how that looks and here you can see the waveform um, that uh, rectified DC sine wave there and so that means um, I am getting the staircase pattern and I uh, it is putting out the sine wave so I should be able to get something on the scope now say for example if I hook up a transistor so I'm going to use two known transistors and what I'm using here is a 2SC3181 which is an NPN power transistor and the test leads are color coded so it's really pretty easy um, I looked at my transistor substitution manual I was able to see that okay the first lead is the base the middle lead is the collector the last lead is the emitter then all I have to do is match the colors like for example here this says C for collector the blue and which is the middle lead and the transistor and green is the base which is the first lead here first pin and of course yellow is the emitter and of course here the this is the um, vertical output here that basically just is hooked up to the scope here and that's basically it same thing here with the horizontal 
output that's hooked up to the um, X input of the scope now um, to the probe so I got everything on now um, I just got to bring everything into position um, of course we can manipulate the controls to get a better look at things just got to play around um, use both your um, channel input to channel attenuators here and one thing I don't like though this the longest line is the what's called a zero current um, baseline this is actually that's the longest line this is this would actually be the line if you only hit this line this will just be with a voltage between current and emitter but no base no base uh, current applied that would be looking just like that but all I have to do is hit the, on my scope, is hit the, uh, I have an inverse switch, and then I can just use that and um, look at that like that now. And here we can see it. Now it's changed position. The uh, zero base current line is right there. And you can see like mine um, at, right now I've got the sweep voltage is 20 volts um, that I'm actually feeding in. And right there I've got... Um, total of six looks like it's six seven uh, seven curves and I am feeding in 50 micro amperes um, and you also got to take a look at your here your uh, ground AC and DC switch like I've got mine in the DC position see what happens when I put it in the AC position here it doesn't really look right so you have to play around with that too. Like here, this looks much better. Same thing if I do it again with the other side. And so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it like this because that's way I can look at I can look at things uh, um, nicely. Now this is actually pretty good. If you're getting uh, some kind of waveform that looks like this, um, you could say, well, it's basically a, a good transistor. Now here's what happens if you get the polarity switch wrong. You get something like that, which is a waveform that's totally wrong looking. So, I mean, if you do know the transistor pins, um, just you got to make sure you hook things up right. If not, you'll get some weird looking waveforms. Also, if you get like the base collector or emitter base, something like that. If you get those pins mixed up, you'll get some weird waveforms too. Um, basically that's it for today I just wanted to see if my thing was working and then I'll probably make some follow-up um, make a follow-up video showing like for example a bad or some bad transistors thanks for watching